Ladies, gentlemen, everything in between. Hello and welcome to episode number 210 of the TWH Way Challenge Run. We are here for the Royal Rumble 2022. Um, 110 episodes I know have passed since last year's Rumble because um, <laughs> that <laughs> was episode 100 because that's why I did the, slap, the Smackville pay review. It was held in Boston. Right, 306. 36,652 people. And I'm having a look at what was going on here. Escobar and Swerve beat Vikings. Rollins and Randy. Sasha and Ember. Bianca. Mm-hmm. <laughs> John Cena won the Royal Rumble. Who's going to win the Royal Rumble this year? Who knows? As I'm, as I'm recording this, I've not started the editing at all. Well, that's a lie. I've made... The pictures and shit, which you'll see later on, but I haven't started the actual any of the actual ed video editing yet, or recorded the audio for the rumbles, <laughs> so <laughs> it's fine. Um, yeah, without any further ado, let's get ready to rumble. So I'm actually going to have a pre-show segment here because it's an important one. Kayla's on there. I've just filled the kickoff panel with JBL, Pat McAfee, and Jimmy Smith. But Kayla says she's got breaking news because we're going to reveal the WrestleMania host tonight. As the road to WrestleMania begins, we're going to find out who will be on hosting duties at AT&T Stadium in April. And JPL's like, ah, oh, Magal, it's gonna be fucking great. I'm gonna be the host, Magal. How do you know it's not me, Kayla? Come on. Rah. <laughs> yeah, just a quick segment to let people know that the host of WrestleMania will be revealed tonight. Let me get the pre show match. AE, thank fuck nobody got injured in this. <laughs> because that's all, I, that's all I worry about now whenever I book any match is that somebody's gonna fucking break their leg. <laughs> because these two are booked in the Rumble. Or for, these two. These four are booked in the Rumble, so I couldn't do with any of them getting injured. But an AE Karini over Tain over Shotzi and Ember. The new heel duo of Shotzi and Ember. EO pins Shotzi with the Moonsault to make defense number three of the women's tag team title on the kickoff. 82 for Kairi, 97 for EO, 78 for Ember, and a 71 for Shotzi. Welcome to the Royal Rumble immigrant song. <laughs> I've tried this. I don't know if I'm actually going to make an intro package for this pay-per-view. I don't think I did for the Rumble last year, so... <clears throat> but I've just put... This would be where the intro is. I imagine Immigrant Song playing, because I always thought that would be a fun intro song for a Royal Rumble pay-per-view for some reason. Don't know why. Just think it would. <laughs> but we open with an 86... The Fatal 4-Way, the highly anticipated Fatal 4-Way match. Drew McIntyre, Keith Lee and Edge, all looking to challenge Finn Balor and take his World Heavyweight Championship. The odds are against the champion tonight. And there's no Holland, no Escobar, no Scott. Because we don't know if they're going to be in the Royal Rumble or not. So they're not here. So it's Finn Balor going alone against Drew McIntyre, Keith Lee and Edge. And the match goes 20 minutes, 16 seconds. They steal the show. They try and do as much as they can. And obviously, Keith Lee is the big boy here. So he's pouncing people. He's giving people fucking grizzly magnums and shit. And then all the other guys are like, fuck, we have to try and take this guy out. So then that would be Edge and Drew on the outside. Bang. Slamming Keith through the announce table. So Keith's been slammed through the announce table. Writing him out of the match and then Finn is in the ring he's having a he's got now overcome Edge and Drew because I'm like hey why don't we fuck this guy up then us two can fight each other and then bang bang Claymore Drew goes for the cover obviously Edge pulls him off and they get into an argument and that alliance ends 
Drew then ends up dropping Edge with the Claymore. Boom. But he turns around. Balor, low blow. 1916 coup de gras. Finn Balor pins Raw's franchise player 1 2 3 to make defense number 4 of the World Heavyweight Championship and begin the road to WrestleMania as the World Heavyweight Champion. 89 for Finn, 88 for Drew, 82 for Keith, and an 84 for Edge. But <laughs> it all sort of fell apart towards the end there for Drew and Edge, and Drew ended up paying the price for it, and Finn Balor scores the victory. We then get, well I don't know why they don't do these anymore, because they're fun, <laughs> the two tumblers backstage. Um, Adam Pearce and RJC, of course, from SmackDown, Shane, representing Raw, because we're not having a celebrity guest at the Rumble. <laughs> and they're like, you know, Rumble hype is in the air. I've already had a couple of people come in here and pick their numbers out from who I've seen come in here. What a show we've got on our hands. And they're like, yeah, I know, but SmackDown's going to win, Shane, you know that. And Shane's like, well, we'll have to wait and see. And then everyone goes quiet when Randy Orton walks in. He's like, sup, boys? Puts his hand in there, pulls his number out. Just opens it up, reads it, shows no expression, gives no hint whatsoever as to what number he's in, what number he's pulled, and just walks out. And Arde's like, man, that guy's always so miserable. Dolph Ziggler. We get, like, the the cool entrance where we see him walking through the hallway, through Gorilla, and out. He's got, like, a hood up, because this is Ziggler's final stand. He's technically not employed by WWE. Him and, him and Bobby Roode have an I quit match up next. If Ziggler wins, he gets his job back. If Ziggler loses, he's banished from WWE for life. We will never see this man's face, hear his name ever again. And the match gets an 84. And I'm going to... Obviously, there's not going to be much suspense here. Bobby Roode quits in 1531. And a beaten, battered... But now employed, Dolph Ziggler stands tall. Oh, that! Oh, him and Bobby Roode went to war. <laughs> back at SummerSlam, Bobby Roode banished him from the company. Ziggler came back by winning 24-7 Ireland and getting a US title shot despite not being under contract. Winning the belt and then <laughs> having to fight Roode for it. And then Roode took it off him, ba banished him from SmackDown. Ziggler screwed Roode out of his championship against Braun Breaker. And then we ended up here. And it's now all over. Ziggler has won. <laughs> the the, the Tumblr boys are back. And they're like, you know, Randy Orton, he's such a weird boy. But, you know, he's won two of these before. I think he's my pick, Adam, he is. And Pierce is like, I don't know who my pick is. I don't really know. I'm, think, I'm feeling, if it's going to be a Smackdown guy, I'm thinking, I'm feeling our boy Big E. And Shane's like, Big E? Well, we have basically a bigger, stronger version of Big E and Bobby Lashley on Raw, because he's going to win, because Raw's going to win, and then Bivens is like, ladies, 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 you can stop the argument now, because the winner of the Raw Rumble has ended the room, and who am I talking about? Am I talking about AJ Styles? Am I talking about Kevin Owens? Or am I talking about the big boy back here? And <laughs> AJ goes to take his ball, he opens his ball up, and he's like, ugh. He's like, you know, when I made my debut in the Royal Rumble, I drew number three, so anything better than that is a win, I guess. And Owens takes his ball, he's like, ha! Yes! I, I, uh. And Ada's like, oh, come on, get, get a good number, did you, Kevin? He's like, oh, wouldn't you like to know? And Kev's like, you know, I need to go get ready, see you out there. Then he sort of looks back down at his number, and he's like, oh, yet again, maybe not. He walks out, and then AJ's like, oh, come on, he walks out as well. And then Omos slowly walks up, puts his big hand in the tumble and pulls his ball out. Just crushes the ball in his hand, stares down, looks at his piece of paper in his hand, and just walks out. Show again, showing no emotion or giving any hint whatsoever as to what number he got. Big video package. Speaking of blood feuds are now coming to an end. This has been going on since June. Tyler Breeze was the master attacker who screwed Xavier Woods out of King of the Ring. His dream. And then Woods has been a son of a bitch attacking him behind his back, taking Kofi's IC title. 
and then Woods finally got his comeuppance at high voltage last month. Which, <laughs> to say has driven Tyler Breeze insane would be um, an understatement. He was trapped in a psych ward for like three weeks, just screaming at Woods with pictures on the wall, until he found his warden, his dawn of war. Am I getting one more match between the two here tonight to end things once and for all? In an 89, I'm so happy that these matches have been fucking great. Because this feud has been... I've had this whole feud planned out since, obviously, Mania. I was originally going to keep it going all the way till Mania. So it was going to start in June and they were going to have their match at Mania for the belt. But I decided, eh, I can't really drag it on that long. And I don't think all big long feuds need to be dragged out to Mania. That is a, a trap people fall into. Like, oh, I can't do this at fucking this B-show because it's got to happen at WrestleMania. Well, then you just make the B-shows look less important. So, <laughs> so they had their first match at High Voltage. Woods won the belt there and he's defended it here at the Royal Rumble. In an 89 rated match, he pins Woods with a Shining Wizard. Finally, the devil is off his shoulder. He may not be the king of the ring like he always dreamed, but he is the Intercontinental Champion. Long may he reign with that belt. <laughs> They're like, RJ's back and he's like, you know, two Royal Rumble matches. Two, that's so exciting. We went over who we were going to pick to win the, the men's Rumble. Shane, who's your pick for the women's Rumble? And Shane's like, you know, we've got a lot of good options on Raw. <laughs> no, yes, actually, he doesn't ask Shane first. RJ's like, you know, my pick to win the women's Royal Rumble? It's going to be one of the SmackDown gals. Io Shirai has got this in the bag, Pierce. What do you say? Pierce is like, you know... Again, I've got to show Fave in SmackDown. Ba Bailey's the one I'm looking at. I think Bailey's got, got what it takes. What about you, Shane? He's like, you know, there's a lot of great people over on Raw. Could be Tony Storm. Could be Rhea Ripley. Raquel Gonzalez. And then, halt! You can stop the jibber-jabber this second because the real winner has entered the room. Woo. Now, if you'll excuse me, she sort of like rolls her sleeves on her jacket up, picks her ball out. And undoes it and has a look. She's like, you know, it doesn't really matter what number I pull. Because I can win my second Royal Rumble from any number. And then she's like, come on, let's go. And Jordan's like, do, do I not get to pick a number? Like, nope, let's go, let's go. <laughs> and they leave and they're like, Shane's like, you know, I really hope it's not Charlotte. And then in what Carabinio, like, exhausted after their match. Like, they're a little sweaty, they're, but they've obviously tidied up, had time to rest before the rumble. And they're coming to take their numbers. Kyrie takes her ball first. Oh no, they take their balls at the same time but then Kyrie opens hers first. Like, let me open first. And he was like, whatever. And Kyrie opens her ball. She's like, eh. This is eh. You can tell by her little face. But she's, like, she's still excited to be in the match. Like, I can win from here. And then Eo pulls her ball out and she sort of just opens the paper and then drops like the two halves of the ball just in shock as she just stares in absolute disgust at the paper in her hand and Kyrie sort of looks at her face all confused then leans over her shoulder to look at the number and she's like Ooh. but it's time <laughs> the women's royal rumble is upon us and, you know, just like every single year, there's one thing that the Royal Rumble is truly about. And that's the numbers. The Royal Rumble. WWE's yearly greatest survival game. Since 1988, it has been the most highly anticipated event in the WWE calendar. 30 men, 30 women, one goal. To emerge victorious and headline the grandest stage of them all. 29 superstars will be eliminated with their two feet landing on the floor. And for those superstars, the dream is over. But how would one survive the rumble? Well, let's count the ways. Since the match's inception in 1988, there have been 39 total Royal Rumble matches, which have seen a whopping 1,190 competitors make their way down the aisle, hoping to achieve victory. Of those 1,190, only 31 different superstars in WWE history 
have been able to achieve victory in the match. Seven of those superstars managed to achieve victory on more than one occasion, and for 21 years, Stone Cold Steve Austin was the only man who could boast three Royal Rumble victories, but John Cena added himself to that elusive group last year. Roman Reigns could learn a thing or two about securing victory from Cena and Austin, as he's found himself as the match's runner-up on four separate occasions, which is the most of any superstar in history. Just don't tell him we brought that up. Acknowledge me. 30 years after the men's first Royal Rumble match, a huge announcement was made. An all women's Royal Rumble match! WWE's women would now take part in the historic event. With it, a whole new set of numbers into the fray. On the men's side, Daniel Bryan's 1 hour 16 minute and 5 second run in the 2018 Greatest Royal Rumble is the longest time spent in a single men's Rumble match, with Natalia's 56 minute and 1 second run in the 2019 Women's Royal Rumble being the longest time spent in a women's Rumble. The longest time for a winner, however, was Rey Mysterio to find the odds back in 2006, when he ended at number 2, lasted 62 minutes and 12 seconds, and punched his ticket to WrestleMania. The longest time for a women's Rumble winner belongs to Charlotte Flair. The Queen also holds the honour of spending the most cumulative time in a women's Royal Rumble, with the men's honour going to Y2J himself, Chris Jericho. Drink it in, man! Not everyone can be so lucky. Former Raw Women's Champion Liv Morgan holds the dishonour of being the woman to spend the shortest amount of time in a single Women's Royal Rumble, when she lasted just 8 seconds in 2019. Fortunately for her, that's still 7 seconds longer than Santino Morella in 2009. It takes more than just survivability to emerge victorious in the Royal Rumble. It's also about your ability to wreck house. Few men in WWE history have been more capable of that than the Big Red Machine, Kane, who holds the record for remaining the most competitors in history, tallying up 43 victims across his record 19 Royal Rumble appearances. The most eliminations in a single men's Rumble is currently tied with both the monster among men Braun Strowman and the Beast Brock Lesnar, eliminating 13 superstars with the Beast Incarnate holding the unique record of 13 consecutive eliminations. As for the women, both Bianca Belair and Shayna Baszler are tied, with both eliminating 8 women apiece back in 2020. However, Shayna can boast that 7 of hers were consecutive eliminations which is the record for the women's match. We've been through survival, we've been through elimination. The third and final thing you need to come out on top of the Royal Rumble? Luck. That is, of course, the luck of the draw. Some wrestlers have been able to defy the odds, and go from entrant number one or two to come out on top, with both spots seeing two victories each. That is only one less victory than the coveted number 30 spot has produced. The lucky number? 27. Despite not producing a winner in 21 years, the number 27 has produced the most winners in the history of the Rumble. Whichever man and woman draw that number this year will hope to bring the luck back on their side. This year, the numbers mean more than ever before. The biggest two-night WrestleMania in history at AT&T Stadium in Dallas, Texas, calls for one lucky man and woman who grabbed their dream. And since the rule was first introduced back in 1993, 58% of Royal Rumble winners have gone on to capture the chosen championship on the grandest stage of them all. The question is, who has what it takes to seize their moment, achieve destiny, and make themselves immortal? Ladies and gentlemen, the numbers are in. The countdown has begun. The 2022 Royal Rumble matches begin now. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for the 2022 Women's Royal Rumble match. Now in this match, two superstars that drew number one and number two will begin the match in the ring at the same time. Every 90 seconds, another superstar will enter based on the numbers that they have drawn all throughout the evening. A superstar is eliminated by going over the top rope with both of her feet landing on the floor. This will continue until all 30 superstars have entered the match and 29 women have been eliminated. The last remaining superstar will be declared the 2022 Women's Royal Rumble winner 
and will receive a Raw or SmackDown Women's Championship match at WrestleMania 38. The former Raw Women's Champion, Io Shirai, she held the gold for eight months last year from, um, well, the 1st of January, technically, and then all the way to SummerSlam, where she was dethroned a triple threat by Becky Lynch. And she looks to regain her gold at the grandest stage of them all. Or maybe she'll go for the SmackDown gold, because that is the brand she is now won, but she has to do it from number one in the Rumble. It was her, Becky and Rhea, became the first women to main event SummerSlam. She looks to become only the third time women have main evented WrestleMania. As she does the stretches in the ring and awaits her opening adversary. This is my brutality! And quite a strange twist of fate, the other woman who main evented SummerSlam, that isn't the champion right now, Rhea Ripley, is entrant number two in the Rumble match. The crowd is buzzing because we've only got two top women to begin this match. And the bell rings, and then Io and Rhea just like smile at each other from opposite ends of the ring. Because, ha, look at this, isn't this funny? They then get in each other's faces, and Rhea starts mouthing off at Io, and Io like, pie faces Rhea, she shoves her hand in her face and just push, shoves her back. And then Rhea ch- shuckles, and she's like, okay, bitch. And she shoves Io to the floor, and then Io sat- sits on her, on her ass on the floor, and she's like, okay, yeah, fair enough. They then begin, like, actually going at it. And then the minute passes, obviously Neva is eliminated in the first minute. And then out comes the third entrant. Yes, yes, y'all. So fresh, y'all. Snoop Dogg with Sasha Banks. We're the best, y'all. Make way for the new. What it do? And if you weren't away, let me say she coming. Entrant number three is the statistician for boss, Miss Dana Brooke. And she looks to earn the right to challenge... I guess either Tegan Knox or Sasha Banks herself at WrestleMania if she was to win tonight. Dana gets into the ring and both of the other women, Io and Rhea, just turn and stare at her. And Dana tries to fight off Io, but Io shoves her down. And then Dana gets back up and she then goes for Rhea, who also shoves her down. And then Dana's like, well, fuck. And she sort of like pleads her forgiveness. And then Rhea, boom, big boot. And then Rhea goes to pick up, big up Dana and eliminate her. But Io's like, now nah, I'm going to try and get you out and tries to eliminate Rhea. And then Rhea fights her off. And then they, they them two go at it. And then Dana just starts recovering in the corner. <laughs> NXT's Cora Jade enters the Rumble at number four. Possibly the youngest entrant in Rumble history. I think. Maybe. Depends how old... Um, I think Renee Dupree might have been in one. Kenny Dykstra was 20 in 2007, which is the same age as Cora, so I don't know. Maybe. She skates down to the ring and slides. she then slides in the ring. She looks around and she like takes in the surroundings like, holy shit, 90,000 people, I'm in the Royal Rumble. She decides to take the fight to Io Shirai, who then ends up fighting her off as Dana gets to her feet. And then Cora takes Dana Brooke down. She hits a big drop kick to eliminate Dana. And Dana becomes the first elimination of the match. Cora, Cora is then dropped by Io as she turns around after celebrating her first elimination in the Rumble. Io tries to eliminate Cora, but she skins the cat and fights her way back in as entrant number five makes their way to the ring. Entrant number five. He's Tony Storm, who nearly became the Raw Women's Champion. 
she swaggers her way down to the ring. She goes right after Rhea, obviously, because they're long-time friends slash foes. And then, obviously, that leaves Io and Cora to sort of go at it in the corner. Tony takes Rhea down and tries to get her out, but Rhea is just too much and fights her off. And Io charges at Rhea, who's still on the apron with a massive dropkick, and it's like, oh shit, she staggers. But she manages to hold on the rope. She goes a little bit groggy on the apron, but she manages to hold on to the rope and not, not get eliminated. Cora also charges at Rhea to try and get her out of the match. But Rhea catches her, shoves Cora to the floor, and fights her way back into the ring, avoiding elimination, dropping Tony and Io with boots. And she stands tall, like, yeah, bitch, as number six comes in. Raw's Frankie Monet enters the match at number six, and she makes her way to the ring, and Rhea's like, come on, I can have you, because if is the only one still standing, because she just dropped everyone else. And Frankie gets her full elaborate entrance. She gets her big fluffy coat, enters the ring, and she like tosses the jacket in Rhea's face to like startle her. And Rhea's like, trying to fight and get it off, and then Frankie tries to eliminate Rhea as she's got the, the jacket covering her face. But Rhea fights out, and she drops Frankie with a big boot as well. And Rhea's like, yeah, come on. She shears the crowd on. And then she charges at Io, who's, who's now up against the ropes. But Io pulls the ropes down. So it's like she's charging and she tries to eliminate her like with Rhea's momentum. But she falls onto the apron and obviously not out. Io then takes the fight to Frankie. Tony and Cora rest and blah, blah, blah. Io, Rhea's on the apron as entrant number seven comes in. And number seven is Alexa Bliss from SmackDown, and she's bringing her five feet of fury to the Rumble. She immediately goes right after Cora because, like, I feel like Cora Jade as a person would be like a natural enemy of bitch Alexa. <laughs> Tony and Rio go at it as well, which leaves obviously Frankie and Io. She tries to drop Io with the fucking um her finisher, Road to Valhalla, and Io fights out. And she drop kicked Frankie against the ropes, which sort of staggers her. And then a second drop kick as Frankie staggered against the ropes, and she's over the top, and her feet smack on the floor. And Frankie Monet is eliminated from the Rumble. Io sort of mocks her as she gets the elimination, and but Alexa jumps at Io, knocking her down. She then hits them like Io's down in front of the ropes, and Alexa stands on Io's backs and does those stomps, and just works Io down as the number eight entrant comes in. Number eight is Aoife Valkyrie from NXT UK. She runs wild in the ring. She like does that thing where she climbs to the top rope before she enters the match and hits a big diving crossbody to make her entrance, taking out Alexa and Tony. She runs wild, wiping out Rhea before Cora cuts her off. And Cora and Valkyrie sort of look at each other. They're like, huh? Yeah, we're we're both young NXT people looking to make a name for ourselves, but they end up fighting anyway. And they fight next to the ropes. Uh, Alexa's like, oh shit, I'm going to eliminate both of these bitches. But they like, no, we fuck off Alexa. And they fight her off. And neither of them get eliminated before number nine comes in. Shotzi's here. She doesn't have time to bring the tank out with her. She rushes to the ring and immediately she goes for Io because like they've been locked in a rivalry they even had a match on the kickoff show but Io is she knows Io is tired she had that match and she's still been in here since number one so she's like oh that'll be an easy pick she she goes up top she hits the fucking ball pit wherever it is the falling scent on Io and she like picks her up and tosses her over the top but Io skins the cat and fights Shotzi off then rolls back under the bottom to stay in the match but Shotzi's laser focused he wants Io Shirai out of this match as every other, all the other women just sort of fight amongst themselves. Aether goes with Tony Storm, which eventually results in Tony dropping her with the Storm Zero and eliminating Aether Valkyrie from the match to make her the third elimination of the match. And she then drops Alexa with one, and but as soon as Alexa gets hit with it, she quickly rolls into the corner to protect herself. And then Shotzi and Io sort of take centre stage and start brawling and fighting in the middle of the ring as entrant number 10 enters. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
in comes the other half of the women's tag team champions. Kairi storms to the ring, and Shotzi obviously sees her coming, and bang, she's cut off with a massive spear as Kairi enters the ring, and she's like, ow, and rolls into the corner, the opposite corner that Alexa's in, and so Shotzi and Alexa are sat in the corners, and he, and Kairi's like, oh shit, and she hits the sliding D elbows on one on Shotzi, then one on Alexa. And then Shotzi gets the insane elbow because obviously they hate her. And then her and Neo pick Shotzi up and Shotzi is eliminated because they don't like Shotzi. <laughs> Kyrie and Neo like stay on top for the rest of the sort of time. They fight the other women in the ring, but Rhea gets up. Rhea wipes out Kyrie with a big boot. And then Eo's like, well, fuck you and drop kicks Rhea and Rhea gets taken down. And then Eo kicks up and she's like r- riling the crowd up as the countdown begins. And Io is the only person on her feet as entrant number 10 makes their way to the ring. Bow down to the queens. Zero. Music that is unfamiliar to the WWE Universe plays, but we soon find out because out comes women's international superstar Utami Hayashishita. She's a women's wrestling standout and the newest signing to WWE. Um, Her and Io sort of Get, she gets in Eo's face and Eo's sort of confused because she's like, but I'm Queen's Crest. But you are, but, uh. <laughs> and then Kairi sort of gets to her feet as well before Utami can touch Eo because Eo and, Eo and Utami are just having her face off because they're like, oh shit, you're like the new me. And then Kairi gets to her feet and she's like, oh, I'm going to help Eo fight this bitch. And then Utami takes them both down, resulting in her eliminating Kairi Zane. And then they, she goes, turns back around, doesn't have a face off of Io, but Alexa sort of interrupts. She shoves Io to the side and gets in Utami's face and it's like "fuck you" and slaps her in the face. And then she's like, "Well, you shouldn't have done that, bitch." And Utami drops Alexa, and Alexa gets eliminated. And then Utami is celebrating her elimination when Rhea bang jumps Utami from behind, takes her down to sort of welcome her to the Fed. And then Rhea remains on top as entrant number twelve comes in. It's Bailey, the role model, makes her entrance at number 12. And she goes right for Tony Storm, I think. Yeah, doesn't really matter. <laughs> Bailey takes it to Tony and Rhea before dropping Cora with the headlock driver. Utami then gets in Bailey's face and she takes Bailey to the floor. And just another like uneventful minute goes by. No eliminations as number 13 makes her way to the ring. It's Liv Morgan, she was last year's number 30, but this year she's number 13. The Spitfire rushes to the ring to sort of like pounce on whoever's up on their feet, and it happens to be Bailey, so Bailey gets taken down by Liv, and she hits the Fez press on Bailey. And then Cora's like leaned up against the ropes, and Liv's like, well, fuck you, and bang, hits the oblivion. <laughs> and then EO cuts off the offense to like take Liv down and be like ha ah, she's now in the match so no eliminations happen like the rest of the time just goes by and nothing important happens and then number 14 comes in it was the star of team NXT at Survivor Series, Miss Anna J and is at number 14, and she's like, well, there's another NXT bitch in here, I want her. So she goes right for Cora. She takes Cora down, and Io takes down Tony, Bailey takes down Utami, and then Anna, Io, and Bailey are like the only three on their feet. And they all sort of like have a face to face to face because this was the final three at Survivor Series. It was Bailey for Team SmackDown, Io for Team Raw, and Anna for Team NXT. And Bailey was like, 
I haven't forgot what you did, Anna. And Anna's like, well, bring it on, bitch. I'm ready to go again. And Eo, they both just look at Eo, and she's like, shrug, and is like, fuck it. And starts to fight both of them. Then hits the big double springboard dropkick on both, kips up, and and then just fights Utami while number 15 makes their way to the ring. Julia of Dominion is number 15 and she immediately goes for Utami because obviously they've got a bit of history in stardom together more recently than Io has so like that's the immediate target for Julia as she enters the ring and they exchange strikes bang 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 wiping each other out and then Liv sort of gets to her feet as the two Joshis fight it off in the corner and her she gets into it with Cora Jade and Rhea Ripley charges at both and Clotheslines both over the top rope. Liv manages to skin the cat, but unfortunately Cora falls to the floor. Her feet smack on the floor, and she's eliminated. And then Rhea's like, well, that's done. She tries to fight Bailey, And then Bailey nearly has Rhea eliminated, but nothing happens. And then all the women end up on the floor as entrant number 16 makes her way to the ring. One half of Daniel's katana enchilada makes her way to the ring. Hams, she brings Goku out with her, the stuffed pig. <laughs> and she sits Goku on the on the steps and gets into the ring and she sort of like awkwardly looks around and then sees Bailey on the floor and she tries to pin Bailey. And Bailey kicks out and she's like, What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and Hams is like getting really angry, stamping her feet, and starts attacking Bailey and just furiously just assaulting Bailey on the floor. And everyone in the ring sort of just looks at her like what the fuck? And then Ham sort of looks around. And she like looks around at everybody looking at her. And she's like, where's my friend? And, but, <laughs> but Morgan is not in the match. Morgan Daniels is not in the match yet. She just Ham's. And she's like, which one of you hurt my friend? And then she sees Liv. Because Liv was in that match against DKE at Survivor Series. So Ham's is like, well, this is the bitch that hurts my friend. She pounces on Liv and starts striking Liv. And then the other women are like, well, we can let her do her thing. We can try and win the match. And then out comes number 17. <laughs> the other half of the riot squad is here. And Ruby rushes to the ring and she immediately pulls Hams off Liv. She drops Hams with a riot kick and her and Liv eliminate Hams from the match. But... She doesn't know the rules, obviously, because she tried to pin Bailey. So Hams goes over the top, her feet hit the floor. She's out, but she immediately gets back to her feet and rushes straight back into the ring. And the referees are like, no, 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 you're out. And she's like, no, 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 I, I need to get beat them up before finally Morgan has to come out. And is like, no, no, come on, take Goku and come to the back. <laughs> so had to do a bit of, you know, TW fan service. Good old DKU shenanigans in the Royal Rumble. And there. Yeah. It just a cameo, really. <laughs> but anyway, Ruby and Liv sort of look on as DKE leave, and they're like, whatever. And then they work on, like, Tony and Anna, with no other eliminations happening before entrant number 18 comes out. I'm on my own, against the wall. The pressure's building, but no, I will never fall. Instead of crying, they hear me roar. And now it's-, it's last year's Royal Rumble winner, and she's looking to go back to back. And she storms to the ring. She's like got her earrings in and she makes her way to the ring. She emphatically takes them out, tosses them on the floor, takes her jacket off because she's coming to kick ass. Whip. She's coming to whip that ass, as she'd say. And then she immediately gets in, whips Ruby with the braid across the stomach. And then one to live as well. And then Julia gets hoisted up for the KOD. She gets nailed. And then B- Bianca disposes of Julia. The member of Dominion is out. Bianca then gets jumped by Tony Storm. And Bianca overpowers her and eliminates Tony Storm as well because she's a strong bitch. And then Bianca finally hoists Ruby up and she goes to eliminate Ruby, but Liv's like, nah, 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 and pulls, grabs Ruby's ankles and pulls her to safety. And then the two of them finally work together to ground Bianca to stop her absolute massacre that she's created as she's ended this match. And then number 19 comes to the ring. Yeah. 
It's former WWE Divas Champion Caitlyn. She's number 19 to a big pop. And she enters the ring and she takes the fight to Ruby and Liv who come after her. But she's outnumbered. And then Bianca helps fire him off. So then Rhea drops Bianca with a boot and she goes face to face with Caitlyn. And they sort of like, we get these two big strong women just mouthing off at each other. And Ruby and Liv sort of both stagger to their feet in the background. And Caitlyn tosses Liv out. And then Rhea's like, well, what the fuck? And tosses Ruby out. And she's like, bitch, if you can eliminate someone, so can I. And then <laughs> they finally begin their brawl as both members of the Riot Squad have been eliminated. And Bianca's like, girl, uh-uh, there's big, strong women having a fight in this match I want in. So we sort of get like a freeway scrap as the four other women just are like, well, we'll let them do their thing and we'll do our thing. And then number 20 comes out. Bring it to the floor. Naomi is entrant number 20. She rushes to the ring like only Naomi could. She hits the big... She leaps off the top rope with a clothesline. Take out Bailey and Anna. Naomi running wild. She's dropping Io with all sorts of rear views. And then she gets face-to-face with Caitlyn. And it's like, ha, huh, because you're the only one from that season of NXT that's still here. And I came through that same season. That was 12 years ago, Naomi. And now we're face-to-face at the Royal Rumble. Will one of us go to WrestleMania? Naomi charges at Caitlyn. She hits like a crossbody. But Caitlyn catches her. And then she turns around. And then bang. Utami drops Caitlyn with a drop kick. And they all fall to the floor. And the fighting continues until entry number 21 comes out. Smackdown subculture member Danny Luna is number 21. She takes the fight right to Bailey, and her offense is cut short by Rhea, and it's just, they continue the shoving, really. <laughs> An uneventful 90 seconds happens here before number 22 makes her way to the ring. Now this will sure be anything but uneventful, because the Queen is here, woo, the 2020 Royal Rumble winner, she makes her way to the ring with Reggie and Jordan in tow, and she's sort of slowly disrobing before she enters the match, and she immediately goes right for Rhea, the woman who she went with, went into Hell in a Cell with, like, last month, and who's been in this match since entrant number two, and she stamps her in the corner, she's like, fuck you, woo, fuck you, woo, before she turns around. And she goes face to face with Caitlyn. And Charlotte tries to attack Caitlyn, but Caitlyn hoists Charlotte onto her shoulders. And it's like, oh shit. And then, but obviously, Charlotte fights off. Bang. Dumps Caitlyn out of the ring to a boo. And she's like, oh yes, I'm the best, woo. And she starts mocking Caitlyn, going, haha, you are shit. Get fucking back to retirement. And she starts doing like a Ric Flair strut. And then <laughs> Bianca sneaks up behind Charlotte. And eliminates the Queen to a thunderous cheer. So Charlotte was in this match for about 30 seconds. And she looks on in absolute horror. She's like, no, 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 no. That did not happen, woo. And then Bianca's like, ah, kiss my ass. And then (laughs) Charlotte goes to leave. And then the referee's like, come on, Charlotte, come to the back. And Charlotte shoves the referees to the floor. She re-enters the match. Bang, she drops Bianca from Belair from behind. And she continues to attack Bianca in the ring because she's a salty bitch. She only lasted 30 seconds. She's like, don't you dare embarrass me, woo. Fuck you. And then tosses Bianca out. So Bianca has been eliminated by Charlotte. And then <laughs> she sort of, sort of shields some of the referees off as she waits for Bianca to get to her feet. And bang, she drops Bianca with a big boot. And Bianca like, gets to her feet and he's like, girl, come on, if you want to fight, I'll fuck you up. Get these hands, etc. And then the referees have to try and escort them away. It's a big, like, mass brawl with, like, referees and road agents having to pull Charlotte and Bianca apart as entrant number three. Not, tw- not number three, number 23 enters. <laughs> Maki begins her song on the stage. She's riding the crowd up. She's going, oi, oi, oi. 
and <laughs> and she just keeps singing her song in the background as Charlotte and Bianca are being pulled away by the road agents and referees. So like it's the funny visual of them two trying to brawl with Mackie just singing in the background. Because like everyone's watching that, but everyone in the ring is sort of watching the fighting as well, and nobody's paying attention to Mackie's song. But she doesn't make her way to the ring because the song is 90 seconds long. <laughs> and the countdown starts as Mackie's halfway through the song. And then entry number 24, Mackie's still singing as entry number 24 makes their way to the ring. The red carpet is rolled out because Melina is making her WWE return in the Royal Rumble at number 24. And Mackie sort of looks on because the music got cut off and she's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Stamps her feet like, poo, 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 <laughs> etc. And Melina gets escorted to the ring by her paparazzi. It finally got Bianca and Charlotte away from the scene. <laughs> Melina then hits the splits on the apron for a big pop. And Mackie just sort of stands on the stage just watching in half with her arms crossed, pouting going poo poo and Melina makes an immediate impact she gets in the ring and she eliminates Danny Luna and then her and Naomi have like a face off Naomi goes for the clothesline on Melina but she does that thing where she ducks it by doing like the matrix thing and just her and Naomi have a fun exchange and number 25 comes out because nothing really happens in that time Now comes Ember Moon, and she immediately enters. She goes up to the top and drops Melina with an eclipse. She then sort of gets into a fight with, like, Utami, because I imagine that would be cool. Utami drops Naomi, and then Anna Jay takes the fight to Utami. Anna drops Utami on the floor, and then she's met with a springboard kick by Naomi. Naomi the only one standing tall, and then out comes number 26, with no eliminations occurring in this 90. It's the ever-imposing Raquel Gonzalez from Raw. She makes her way out, but she sort of, like, notices Mackie still just sulking on the ramp. And then Raquel sort of looks across at her, and Mackie notices that Raquel's looking her around. She's like, oh, shit, 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 shit. And she tries to run away, but Raquel grabs her, and she carries Mackie, Mackie to the ring. She's got her over her shoulder. She's wiggling, kicking her legs around, trying to escape. But Raquel tosses Mackie into the ring, and she officially enters the match. Then Raquel goes to step over the top rope and enter. But Mackie gets to her feet and starts hammering shots on Raquel. But Raquel shoves Mackie to the floor and, and Raquel enters the match as well. She starts laying waste to everybody. But then she eventually comes face to face with Rhea Ripley. And this is two, I mean, real life best friends, but big, strong women. They exchange just strikes one in the middle of the ring. One, bang, bang, bang. And Raquel ends up taking Rhea Ripley down. Mackie then jumps on Raquel's back and starts like hammering away, clawing at her head. And Raquel just tosses her over her shoulder. She's like, fuck you. Charges at Mackie, but she cowers away, rolls onto the bottom rope. And then she's like, well, whatever, I'll fight Bailey then. And then the fights just go on. No eliminations. And then number 27 comes out. Lucky number 27. Candice Lorray has drawn number 27. She immediately comes to the aid of her friend Bailey, who just got wiped out by um, <laughs> Raquel. They book together, they ground Raquel finally. She hits the neck breaker and she signals to Bailey. She's like, Come on, give us a big hug. And then Bailey sort of like, mm hmm. -hmm. The crowd is obviously cheering, going, Yes, hug, hug, hug. You want to see Bailey and Candice hug? And she's like, Hmm. Bailey d d debates it. But Ember Moon jumps Bailey for a boo. <laughs> she gets booed. She also takes down Candace. But as she takes down Candace, Bailey springs up behind her. And then ba Ember turns into a big, emphatic Bailey to Belly. And then she's eliminated to a big cheer from the crowd. But now Ember's out, we really need to, like, you know, start just clearing the ring of some of these bodies. So this is going to be the big elimination, 90. Io suddenly springs back into life, hitting a missile drop kick on Mackie, and then bang, she's eliminated. So she's had her fun moments. 
And then Anna G is impressive running the match comes to an end. Raquel dumps her out. Naomi and Utami then work together to ground Raquel again. Naomi drops Utami and Naomi's anywhere on her feet as out comes number 28. It's Jacqueline Moore. Jackie makes her way to the ring, and Naomi's grinning like as she comes to the ring like, Yes, Queen, this is Queen Jackie. Jackie gets into the ring, and she sort of shakes Naomi's hand, and Naomi's, like, marking out, like, Oh my god, it's Jackie. You're so, you're so cool. But Na- Jackie drops her, and she also drops Bailey and Candice, and then she gets into it with Melina, which ends in one former WWE women's star eliminating another. Jacqueline eliminates Melina from the match. Or she turns around to a big hurricane runner from Naomi, which eliminates Jacqueline. Jacqueline gets she looks angry on the outside, but she sort of smiles at Naomi. She's like, okay, fair enough, you got me. Sort of endorsing Naomi. And then Naomi turns around to take the fight to Io, and everyone else just gets into a fight. They, the shoving continues as number 29 enters. <laughs> Mia Yim from Mustafa Ali's New America, the only member of New America to be in the Royal Rumble. She makes her way to the ring and she comes with aggression. She immediately jumps on Naomi, hits Protect Your Neck, and then dumps Naomi out of the ring. Mia then stays on top of like all the fighting while everyone else just sort of continues the generic shoving. No more eliminations occur before the countdown sounds for the final time and entrant number 30 makes her way out. Entry number 30 is Sonya Deville, and she immediately storms the ring as she takes the fight to Mia Yim. Sonya and Mia sort of like fight for a while, and then Mia's like, whoa, 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 stop, 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 stop. And they point at Candice and Bailey, who of course have been working together because they've been in an alliance recently. And they're sort of like working together to fight Io and Utami in the corner. And then they look at Rhea and Raquel on the other side of the ring, and then Rhea and Raquel sort of look at each other, they're like, hmm. So it appears we have temporary alliances forming here in the Rumble. Got Mia and Sonya, Rhea and Raquel, Io and Utami, and Candace and Bailey, which I guess isn't a temporary alliance. But more importantly, one of these eight women is going to WrestleMania. Io and Rhea have been in there since entrance one and two, and they're still here as entrance number 30 has made their way to the ring. We then get them all like taking a corner of each, but there's two women in each corner. And then a big, they will charge into the middle and a big eight-woman brawl ensues. And they fight for like a minute or two or whatever. And then Sonya is betrayed by Mia Yim. When Mia Yim tries to eliminate Sonya Deville, but she skins the cat. And then she's like, fuck you, gets back in the ring. Drops Mia with a big kick and then Mia Yim is eliminated. Sonya is then running rampant and she pulls up an impressive feat of strength. She single-handedly eliminates Raquel and Gonzalez. And then Candace and Bailey are like, well, shit, because we've got, they then take um, Sonya down before they work together to try and eliminate Rhea Ripley, who they know must be tired at this point. But Rhea has enough energy to fight them both off, drops them both a double clothesline, big boot to Bailey, and Candace, unfortunately, is on the receiving end of an elimination by Rhea Ripley. So we're down to the final five. Bailey like, tries to avenge Candace. She takes the fight to Rhea, and she ends up dropping Rhea on the floor. And then she calls down to Rhea, like, Come on, you son of a bitch, I'll eliminate you. But then Utami sort of comes up from behind Bailey, bang, eliminates Bailey from behind, and Bailey's eliminated. And then again, because I'm a mark and I love the spot, we have four women in the ring, they all sort of crawl to a corner each before they slowly get to their feet. Sonya is the first to her feet, obviously, because she's been in this the shortest amount of time. She was number 30, up against 1, 2, and 11. <laughs> and Utami sort of looks at everyone else, and she makes the first move. She charges at Rhea, massive drop kick. She wipes out Io and Sonya, goes up the top rope, and she's going to hit a big, big move. But Sonya gets to her feet and shoves Utami off. Her feet smack on the floor. And her impressive WWE debut run in the Royal Rumble 
has come to an end. She finishes fourth because Sonia Deville gets the elimination. Sonia laughs at her on the outside and she turns around because she's entrant number 30. She's being cocky. She turns around and she sees an exhausted Rhea and Io both laid out who are entrants 1 and 2. So we've got entrant 1, 2 and 30 as the final three. Sonia gets to choose her prey and she picks Io. She tries to eliminate but there's still a little bit of life left in Io. Because as um, Sonia tries to pick her up, she goes for like a head scissors to try and get Sonia out. And she ends up fighting Sonia off and taking her down. But again collapses out of exhaustion. Rhea and Io then slowly get up to their feet and look at each other. Like through absolute sweat and exhaustion. They're like nodding their heads at each other like... Yeah, like but they're, they're, she's the fresher one. She's the, she's the threat here. Let's do it. And then entrant one and two... Bang, they, they gang up on Sonya, who is number 30. Rhea drops Sonya Deville with a riptide. And then Io hits the big moonsault. And then both women pick up Sonya Deville and eliminate her. The crowd erupts as an exhausted Io Shirai and Rhea Ripley stare at each other. Entrant 1 and Entrant 2 in the Royal Rumble are the final two in the Royal Rumble. I see this dueling chance. Let's go, Eo. Let's go, Rio, etc. And they echo in around the arena. One of these women is about to punch their ticket to WrestleMania, and write their name in the history books for all eternity. Then we'll just, I don't know, give them like a couple of minutes. Even though they're both exhausted, they probably still go for a couple of minutes, like just to have a quick match, basically. <laughs> but in the end, you know, somebody has to come up short. Despite being in from number one and number two, the same amount of time, entrance one and two, the final two in the Rumble, somebody has to lose. And unfortunately for Rhea, she'll be continuing her journey because she scoops up Io, drops Io with the Riptide, picks up Io's body, and finally Io is tossed over the top, her feet hit the floor. And we have our winner, Rhea Ripley, wins the 2022 Women's Royal Rumble match. I am actually content with a 78 for the Women's Rumble, considering how many unimportant people were in it. But <laughs> Anchor is not the main event. But it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Do 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 do. Joshi Shooter, adequate. Melina, adequate bitch. That doesn't matter because she's only here for one night. Same with Caitlyn. Um, yeah. Rhea Ripley. Do I not put the Women's Royal Rumble? Fuck. I can edit that in post, it's fine. <laughs> I forgot to put the Women's Royal Rumble title on the line. I know I put the men's on the line for a fact. But, that's fine. I gave, um, Io the Iron Man. Even though it was technically both her and Rhea, because... I didn't even want to try and put two Iron Men in. Because T- I know TW would have a shit fit. So, Rhea actually did get the most eliminations, so I gave her that. And then threw Io the bone of having the Iron Man role in the game. Despite it being tied with her and <laughs> Rhea, obviously. But boom. This is her brutality. Rhea Ripley going to WrestleMania. 77, that's bleh. But t- we're getting Tegan over slowly but surely. And victories over Sasha Banks is what's going to do it. And She gets another one here. 10 minutes, 39 seconds. Because... Look who rears her face again. We haven't seen her since Absolute Zero, where she just screwed Sasha then. But Mickey James is back. And bang, Mick kicked to Sasha. Obviously, Indy's injured. We just saw Dana. I mean, she wasn't in the Rumble for long, but she was in it. But no one else is out here to help Sasha. It's a big night for heels having to go it alone. Because Roman will. Finn did. And I think Becky does next as well. But... Yeah, Tegan retains because Mickey James again screws Sasha Banks. Or Queen Sasha. And then Mickey gets in the ring as Sasha gets to her feet and she's like, You fucking bitch. And she goes to swing at Mickey, but Mickey hits the Mickey DDT on Sasha laying her out. And she's like, She shouts at Sasha, she's like, You really thought you were better than me? I'm the greatest women's champion of all time. Just because you got some crown doesn't mean you're better than me, Sasha. You didn't rejuvenate my career. You were holding my icon status back because it made you feel powerful and Mickey leaves Sasha laying 
We've had the all the women's rumble, but there's still a couple of balls left in the men's pot. She's like, there's there's a ball left. She's like, you know, after seeing Rhea Ripley and Io Shirai go one and two, and they were the final two in the women's rumble, does it really matter, Pierce, what number those are in? Because anyone can win from any number. Pierce's like, yeah, that is the the beauty of the rumble, RJ, yeah? And Shane's like, well, here he comes now, and then walks Johnny Gargano to a big pop. He's like... <laughs> Because there's only like two or three balls left in the pot. Like, not really much of a choice here, is there? I guess beggars can't be choosers. The heart and soul of Johnny Regan wrestling. Let's go on. Heart of the heart of the balls. Puts his heart can in there. Pulls the ball out. Rolls it up. He's like, huh? Like I said, the numbers don't really matter at all, do they? Because anyone can win from any number. And then he turns to leave, and then in walks Shinsuke and Boogs. And Shinsuke's gonna go take a ball out. He takes the last ball in there, so Boog doesn't get a number. But Shinsuke does. And he leaves to go and have a look at what his number is. We don't see Shinsuke open his ball on screen. But he takes the last ball, so all the balls have been issued. <sighs> a lack of psychology, apparently, in a 14-minute match between Becky and Asuka, whatever. Becky got a 96, Asuka got a 91, so just go fuck yourself, game, okay? But Big Brain Bex, she doesn't. She can't have Killer Kelly and Nikki Cross because they're both pregnant. Um, we'd have Kaylee Ray come out, and Julia was in the Rumble, so probably just Micah with Asuka. So them two can cancel each other out on the outside. And then Becky's like, huh, remember that time I got disqualified and I kept my belt because of the champion's advantage? I'm going to fucking do that again. She goes to pick up the belt and goes to hit Asuka with it. Asuka mists her in the face. <laughs> and <laughs> goes to roll her up. Becky somehow kicks out. And then she just rolls under the bottom rope. She starts screaming, going, oh, I got mist in my eye, mist in my eye. And then the referee goes, okay, oh, goes to check on Becky on the outside. And then her and Mike get into a fight again. The referee um, ejects them to, but as he's distracted by them, Becky slides back into the ring, clocks Asuka with the belt. Manhandle slam. One, two, three. Becky retains the belt. Big brain. And Big Brain Bex again celebrates with her only non impregnated <laughs> henchwoman. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to reveal the rap. Please welcome the host. Of Wrestlemania 38. He is. One of the greatest. WWE superstars of all time. He is. A legend. Both in and out of the ring. A pop culture icon. And he's one bad. Bald son of a bitch. And I'll see that gets a big pop. Because everyone thinks they know what's coming. Out comes Baron Corbin, and last time we saw him, he um, was in Bivens Enterprises. Then he went away for a bit, and he was like really depressed post Bivens for like a day in Vegas, and he went to go gamble all his money away. But he's here, and he gets the mic. He's like, "Woo! Ho oh, ho! I'm so happy right now. Let me tell you, because because." Man, you don't want to hear this. My life, my life is the dream right now. And <laughs> I don't know if bad, bald, bad son of a bitch was how I'd describe myself. But damn, it sure fits because I'm one happy man. You see, Vegas was good to me. And now I'm living a life that you could all dream of. In fact, I'm so happy. I ain't Baron Corbin, my name is Happy Corbin, because I am a winner, and you are not a winner. All of you are losers. You don't get luck. 
like me. Fortune doesn't favour you, it favours me. And another thing is that I... Aha! So there he is, there's the real Stone Cold Steve Austin. And he's like... Corbin's like, excuse me, Steve, you're interrupting my, my time here. And he's like, what? He's like, I said, you're interrupting my time here. What? <laughs> Corbin's like, you know, you're really, you're, you're really rude. Do you know that? I'm trying to stare my story of my newfound wealth and fortune, and you're ruining it with your icky, outdated shtick. What? <laughs> it's like, ladies and gentlemen, Baron Corbin, give me a, give me a hell yeah for Baron Corbin. It's like, and ladies and gentlemen, WrestleMania two nights, AT and T Stadium, Dallas, Texas. Good old Stone Cold Steve Austin. He's gonna be the guest host. What? And Corbin goes to leave. He's like, no, 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 Happy. I want you to stay here. Get your, get your bitch ass back in here, boy. He's like, why, Steve? What are you doing? He's like, you know, you know what makes me happy? Drinking beer. And then obviously they'll be, they'll be trying to walk between each other. Like, and stomping mud holes in candy asses. What? <laughs> and it's like, and at WrestleMania, anybody steps out of line. Oh, Stone Cold, he's gonna open up a can of whoop ass on that son bitch. And he then, bang, stun to Corbin. He's like, ladies and gentlemen, if you're excited for Stone Cold at WrestleMania, give me a hell yeah. Hell yeah. And then he gets the, the beers, soaks the ring for a bit, and then leaves back on the four wheeler. Ah, oh, Corbin's happy, lucky dick gimmick got a paw. That's a shame, but it's fine. <laughs> so obviously it's Stone Cold like it just is going to be in real life because he's on all the advertising and shit and yeah he decided to give Happy Corbin a stunner <laughs> but now all of that must be put aside because we're on to serious business Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins possibly for the final time because if Rollins can't win the title here He's banned from ever charging Roman Reigns again while he has the belt. This is a one and done thing. No, no bloodline allowed at ringside. Seth and Roman one on one. 96 rated match. That just isn't the finish that fucking... <laughs> um, 21 minutes, 8 seconds it goes. And... They got pretty good chemistry, so yeah, they both scored ninety fours. You can imagine Seth, Seth and Roman. You can imagine the match in your head right now. It's that. But obviously, Roman's fighting with his back against the wall because he hasn't got him and all the bloodline with him. But when you're the tribal chief, that doesn't matter because you find ways around things. And Seth would be going for the stomp, Roman would pull the referee in the way, and obviously the referee would be like. There'd be that, that awkward thing where, like, him, Seth and the ref bump into each other. And, like, the ref goes groggy. And then Roman hoofs Seth Rollins in the balls. And then locks in the guillotine and Seth passes out. So Roman retains. The game says Paul Heyman interfered, but Paul Heyman wasn't out there. So he didn't. <laughs> 21 08. Defense number 5 of the WWE title. The Tribal Chief. Then out come the Bloodline after the match to celebrate with Roman. And Seth starts to stir down the floor. And Roman's like, cut my music, cut my music off. He's like, Paul, go grab me a microphone. He's like, Seth, it didn't have to be like this, Seth. Look at you, you put it all on the line. Thinking you could stop me rather than just fall in line and acknowledge me. Because me and you, we were brothers, Seth. That could all come back. You just have to simply acknowledge me. And Seth's like, screw you, son of a bitch. And goes to smack him, but then he gets mugged by Fatu and Jimmy. And then Roman's like, well, guess you didn't learn your lesson from last time. Time to put you back on the shelf for another four months. 
and then throws the mic down and they go to deliver the big power bomb on the concrete on the outside when if you smell what the rock is cooking the rock is back he got attacked by the bloodline at survivor series and the rock is rushing into the ring and Jimmy Uso comes to meet him on the ramp. Bang, big clothesline. Bang, big clothesline to Fatu. And then he stares at Roman. He like takes, rips the vest. So he has like some sort of one of his big rock vests that are like really loose and baggy. He rips it off, and he's gonna go toe to toe with the Tribal Chief in the ring. And him and Roman, he starts laying a smack down on Roman's candy ass. Bang, bang, bang. People's punches until Roman escapes under the bottom rope. And. Him and hands in the bell and the, the bloodline run through the crowd as the rock helps Seth Rollins to his feet. And the rock grabs a microphone and he's like, Roman Reigns, as long as I'm around, you son of a bitch, you'll never be the head of the table. Because that will always be me. If you smell what the rock and Seth Rollins is cooking. Dun, 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 bam, bam. Dun, dun. We're gonna stand on top with our hands in the sky. Gonna raise our cup to the stadium lights for the glory. For the glory. We celebrate with the city tonight. Hear the Main event time is here. 30 men. 29 men will be eliminated. One man will achieve his dream. Johnny Wrestling is number one in the Men's Royal Rumble. I mean, we did see both Rhea Ripley and Io Shirai um, last the entire time in the women's match when they had one and two. They were the final two, so um, we know it can be done. And if anyone can do it, Johnny freaking wrestling can. He's got the heart and soul to do it. And the crowd welcomes him in going, Johnny Wrestling. Johnny Wrestling. And he waits in the ring to see who drew number two. When the lights go out, and then a spotlight appears on stage. My name's Rick. Blues. Did you know that I came to rock with? Say it with me, Shinsuke Nakamura. So they had a weird little exchange backstage, um, Johnny and Shinsuke, and funny enough, they're now number one and two in the Rumble. Jewel and Chance, Johnny wrestling Nakamura to start the, the Rumble as the bell rings. And then we get a nice bit of like a couple of seconds of them just like looking around, prepping each other for the match, and then they go at it. Again, nice solid bit of action. And like, they don't really teeter on elimination too much before number three enters. Johnny Wrestling, meet Johnny Drip Drip, the moistest man in WWE is here, and he's going to hope to use his liquid ability, whatever that means, to survive here in this rumble. He gets in, he tuckles up with Gargano for a bit, and Johnny tosses him over the ropes, but Morrison skins the cat and re-enters the match, but he manages to skin the cat, you know, despite being, you know, super slippery and moist, he doesn't let go of the ropes, but he does manage to hold on. Him and Shinsuke then exchange some strikes, and all three men just sort of exchange hits and try and eliminate each other. Nothing really happens, no eliminations occur, and then number three makes his way into the match. (laughs) 
the former United States champion, Drew Gulak, makes his way into the match. I believe this is actually his Rumble debut. I don't think he's ever actually been in a Royal Rumble before. And he immediately locks it up with Gargano. Because of course he does, because it's Gargano and Gulak. And then that leaves McNamara and Morrison to go at it. Shinsuke hits like the the thingy where he gets the guy up in the corner. And then he slides under the bottom rope, hits the German. But because he slides under the bottom rope, he's still in the match. So he can just go outside after sliding under the bottom rope. He's like, boot is right there and starts shredding his guitar to hype Shinsuke up. And Shinsuke gets all fired up as he re-enters the ring to take it to Gulak and Morrison and Gargano. Again, no eliminations go down in this portion, and then entry number five makes his way out to the ring. From up, the former world heavyweight champion, he's number five. We know if anyone, we say Gargano had the heart and soul to go from number one to last of the end. This man's got, he never says quit. And he wants to get that World Heavyweight Championship back that he lost. And what better way to do it than at the grandest stage of them all. He comes in here and he goes out at the Gulak on the mat. And they do some like nice mat based stuff. And Shinsuke and both of the Johnnies sort of go at it. And we'd get obviously an exchange. Shinsuke and Oni would exchange some strikes. Bang, 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 bang. And then number six would enter. No one gets eliminated. <laughs> WWE's Wrestler of the Year, Cesaro, or Wrestler of the Year for 2021, enters at number 6. And if he wants to go to WrestleMania, he's got a long time to survive in this match. We've got Cesaro, Oni, and Gulak sort of getting at it. They do some some cool stuff together. Because we're in that sort of that part of the, that rumble, like rare right at the start, where they just send out a bunch of the good grappler guys and we get some nice graps from the nice grapplers. Cesaro tries to. Score the first elimination, he tries to eliminate Gulak, but Gulak fights him off. Gargano then gets fired up, he drops everybody with super kicks. Bang, bang, bang. And Morrison, he's like on the apron, he's gonna go hit a springboard into the ring, but as he gets up on the apron, Johnny nails him with a super kick, and the most moist man falls to the floor, and he's the first elimination of the match. Johnny Drip Drip is out, and then Gargano is the only man on his feet, as number seven makes his way to the ring. An old foe has appeared. Um, <laughs> John Andrade comes out, Zelina, and um, I would say Legado de la Sombra, but I don't think they'd stay at ringside with him. They'd just sort of like send him out to the ring and then he'd, they'd go to the back. But he comes out like in his suit with like the mask. Like how he comes out in AEW, probably with the AEW music as well, because like that's a sort of presentation that I've got for him in my head. Like he's more sort of like that kingpin sort of guy and Selena's obviously in her business suit etc and she comes to the pink side but when Dozer and Wild go to the back Gargano and Andrade they get into a little face off a call back to their legendary NXT encounter Gargano and Andrade they exchange strikes bang 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 and then Andrade drops him with that big back elbow when then Gargano goes into the corner he hits the running knees on Gargano and then Cesaro's in the other corner he hits Cesaro with the running knees as well he then hits the hammer lock on Oni, but doesn't eliminate anybody as number eight makes his way out. The first Bivens Enterprises guy in the match, the phenomenal AJ Styles, is here at number eight. Six years after he made his WWE debut in this very match, the phenomenal one is hoping to go one better and go the whole way and win it this year. He enters and he hits a big phenomenal forearm to Andrade to sort of introduce himself to the match before he goes to the assault on Gulak. Gulak gets dropped with the Pele kick and then Cesaro charges at AJ. AJ ducks, hits a Pele kick on Cesaro too. AJ kips up and he like swips the hair out of his face. And he turns around and guess who he's face to face with? Shinsuke Nakamura. <laughs> AJ sort of laughs and looks at Shinsuke, he nods, he's like... Okay, yep, yeah, I see, I see. And then AJ and Shinsuke shake hands because it's that bit of respect. And then both men, they start exchanging strikes. And then they take each other down with, like, 
simultaneous kick to the head. Not to the balls, to the, to the head. Because, you know, last time these two exchanged kicks and they both went to the floor. It didn't end well. <laughs> but everyone's down and then number nine comes out. Angelo Dawkins is here, one half of the Street Profits. This is actually his second rumble because he came in, he was in last year's rumble as well. He comes in, he charges at Oni, hits a full head of steam, big leap into the corner, and then he, Dawkins just remains on top for a while, and then Andrade cuts him off. And then we continue with the shoving. We're in that part of rumble where people are, uh, I'm going to eliminate this guy, no one's eliminated. And then out comes number 10. Cameron Grant is hoping to go to the moon. In this case, the moon, I guess, is WrestleMania. He enters his first Royal Rumble. He immediately cave. He immediately runs to the ring, slides in, and immediately gets to his feet and hits the cave in on Gargano. Like before, he's even got time to like take his jacket off or anything. Grimes he then shouts that he's going to the moon. Then he turns around, bang, Kinshasa by Shinsuke, which obviously knocks Grimes down. And then Shinsuke doesn't eliminate Grimes, Grimes is just out. As Shinsuke then works over Gulak, with the good vibrations in the corner. All the other men just get in, into it with stuff. Again, no eliminations, as number 11 enters. It's a new day, yes it is! I don't know if this is a record for how long we've been with only one elimination, but... <laughs> For the Rumble legend, Kofi Kingston is number 11. And he's hoping that this will be the year he finally goes on to win the whole thing. He does that thing where he runs out to the ring and he leaps from the floor and he goes like, he leaps through the bottom of middle rope and then rolls up and hits a clothesline on Shinsuke. He's running wild with his energy and he goes boom, boom drop on both Shinsuke and AJ. Kofi just then tries to eliminate people. Again, nobody gets eliminated in this 90 as entrant number 12 makes his way to the ring. He's back. The last time we saw him, he was getting assaulted by the tribal chief, but Big Quiche is here in the rumble. Kofi and Dawkins are in the ring when um, Rikishi's theme hits and they're like absolutely gassed to see Big Kish. He gets into the ring and the crowd pop going Rikishi, Rikishi. Andrade tries to attack him but Shinsuke stops Andrade as he goes for Rikishi, uh, not Rikishi, <laughs> Rikishi. Then we got like Angelo, Kingston, Shinsuke and Boo and Boogie's on the outside and they're all gassing up Rikishi and the lights dim and it's time for a big dance break. And it would include Kofi. Co it would be Dawkins, Shinsuke, and Rikishi dancing. Kofi would, of course, be twerking, trying to get Rikishi to twerk his big fat ass. And then it would gassed up, but then AJ gets into the spotlight and breaks it up because he's obviously not having this. He gets in Rikishi's face, like, fuck you. And then Rikishi scoops AJ Styles up and hits the Rikishi driver, which AJ actually sells because we're dealing with AJ Styles here and not Hook. And oh, AJ then backs into the corner, which is a mistake, because Kofi and Dawkins notice AJ in the corner. They're like, holy shit, Keish, come on, get your ass out, back that ass up. And the crowd pop big as <laughs> Rikishi gets ready to wiggle his ass in AJ's face. And he's going to hit that horrid stink face on AJ's dials, and he's terrified. But just as he's about to back that ass up, the buzzer sounds again. Uh oh. Batten down the hatches, because here comes Omas. He makes his way to the ring as Rikishi, Kofi, and Dawkins are up. They sort of they stop. We never get to see the stinker face because they're all preparing for the impending arrival of Omas. And, well, there are 12 people in this ring, and as you can imagine, it's probably about to get emptied. The three men charge at him. And he swats them all away with that big giant rumble spot where they're like, ah. 
and overpower everybody. He then grabs Rikishi by the throat and just slowly walks him against the ropes and backs him over because I don't know how much Kishi can bump, but he's out. And he then turns attention to Angelo Dawkins, picks him up, tosses him out too. Kofi's the only one of them three left. Omos picks Kofi up and he gets, instead of, you know, because I'm running out of ideas for like Kofi survival hope spots, so we may as well make it memorable. He's going to get absolutely launched into the air. And we've got Dawkins and Rikishi there to catch him as he falls. And then he falls onto them too. Everyone falls down. Kofi's out. Omos then goes to help Stars up out of the corner. And AJ so relieved because <laughs> Omos saved him from having to take a stink face. And then AJ points at Shinsuke. He's like, get him out of here, Omos. And Omos, of course, obliges and overgoes Shinsuke and he's out. <laughs> then the next again, the face of the giant is, of course, Oni. Of course, Oni's not going to back down. He's ready to kick ass. He goes face to chest with the Colossus. He throws several stiff slaps in the face of Omos, who just looks unfazed. Oni gets hit with the double arm choke slam. And then Omos picks Oni's carcass up and tosses the former World Heavyweight Champion to the outside to a big chorus of boos because we love Oni. And Omos stands tall, waiting to pick which one of the men on the floor will be his next victim as number 14 enters the ring. NXT's Andre Chase is number 14 and he comes out, he's got his microphone and he's like, you know because Dawkins, Kofi and Rikishi are walking past on their way up and Shinsuke and Oni as well, he's like, you know look at all these people getting eliminated they didn't prepare for the Colossus known as Omas well this right here, this is a true teachable moment and that teachable moment is how to avoid messing with a big man like Omas in the Royal Rumble match he then gets into the ring, and he gets into it with his face, like, you know, Omos, I'm here to deliver my teachings on a grand state, Gale, and I got one for you as well. You can learn a lot more from my teaching than AJ Styles is. And AJ sort of gives him a look, and he's like, Omos, destroy this fool. Bang, he grabs Andre Chase by the throat, hoists him into the air, Gorilla presses him out of the ring. So, <laughs> the teachable moment didn't go quite as well as Andre thought. But Omos sort of looks down in disgust on Ch- at Chase on the floor. And he turns around and Cameron Grimes is up. And Grimes is like, wait, 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 wait. He goes to attack Grimes and Grimes stops him. He's like, wait, wait, wait. He pulls a big stack of cash out of his trunks. He starts flicking through. He's like, how much would it take for you to eliminate yourself from the Royal Rumble? And he starts counting. And Omos, of course, gives, looks at him for a couple of seconds before he boots Grimes. The money goes flying everywhere up in the air because I love it when shit like that happens. When someone's holding like a bunch of papers or money or whatever, they get hit and it just flies up in the air. It's a great visual. And then Grimes is also launched out. And Omos stands tall and AJ's like patting him on the back like, yeah, this is great. Before number 15 makes his way to the ring. We all want to go big, then say that. Ho! Number 15 is Big E from SmackDown. He's hyping himself up on the ramp. He's going, come on, we can do this. Taking his jacket off. He's ready. He's getting ready to fight the big man. Big E enters the ring and he gets in the face of Omos. Omos, he grabs Big E by the throat. But Big E has the strength and the power. He powers out of it. And he actually manages to hoist the giant onto his shoulders with the big ending. Which gets a massive pop. Because like, holy shit. But AJ pulls Omos off before he can hit it. And instead, he just like, well, fuck it, I'll hit this guy instead. Bang, he drops AJ with the big ending. <clears throat> Omos then grabs Big E before Big E gets the chance to eliminate AJ. But again, Big E powers out. He like, knocks Omos, he staggers Omos with several big clotheslines, like, ah, up against the ropes. And he tries to single-handedly eliminate him, but he barely budges him. Like, maybe a, a foot will leave the floor at once. But then everybody else in the ring sort of looks at Big E trying to eliminate Omos and everybody in the ring except for AJ works together and they dump the big man out. AJ looks on in absolute shock uh, to a massive pop from the crowd as his insurance policy has been dumped out. And then all of the f- people that just eliminated Omos turn to AJ and he's like, fuck. <laughs> he gets to his feet and he's like, well, come on then. 
he starts dishing up Pele kicks before Andrade eventually drops him. And then Andrade's on top. Bang, Gargano drops Andrade before in comes number 16. Shock the system. It's Adam Cole Bay Bay. He's number 16. He gets into the ring and he's obviously going face to face with Gargano, who's the only person on his feet. And they both look at each other and look around at the crowd. And everyone's like, oh shit, NXT, NXT, NXT. And then Andrade gets involved and like we get that three-way with the three former NXT champions. Two of Gargano's greatest ever rivals fighting him at once. Gulak then takes it to Andrade. Cesaro takes it to AJ. They recoup. And number 17 comes out with no eliminations happening this round. He's looking for his third Royal Rumble victory. He said John Cena got his third last year and he wants his third this year. Number 17, not a bad number to pull from. Randy Orton enters and he has an RKO for everybody. He enters the ring, bang, drops Andrade with an RKO, one to Gargano, one to Cole. He then goes to one on his old rival, Big E. But, of course, Big E sees it coming because he had to scout Randy during that feud. And he shoves, shoves Randy off. He's like, ah, I'm big brain. I know I know when your RKO's are coming. And then them two go back at it. And then Orton hang, comes out on top before he hits the double draping DDT on both Cesaro. So Randy's sort of all on top. He's been on top this whole 90 seconds. But no eliminations. And then the buzzer sounds. Another 18 comes out. <laughs> The ring general from Raw is number 18, and he makes his way to the ring and he gets in the face of Randy Orton. And the crowd's sort of going wild because they're like, oh shit, I, I didn't know I wanted this match, but it's cool. Walter goes to tease a chop to Randy, but Randy avoids it. And then he turns around, bang, uppercut from Cesaro. And then of course Cesaro goes face to face with Walter. They had their epic match back at high voltage, and they're getting a rerun here tonight. They exchange stiff strikes, which results in a big Walter chop, bang, taking Cesaro off, off, the, off his feet. Gulak then tries to take it to Walter. He also gets chop, but this, but unfortunately for Gulak, he also gets booted out, and he's been eliminated from the match. Walter then turns around, bang, he gets RKO'd. Randy then gets into it with like Adam Cole or whatever. Everyone else is sort of recouping, and then number 19 enters. <laughs> Ten years ago, he won the Royal Rumble, and he's looking to make it his second here tonight. Sheamus hits the ring, and he immediately gets into it with Gargano, who's on the apron. And he hits the beats of the Baldron on him. And then he then, he then also gets into a fight with Walter, because they had their match on Raw, and it would be big and stiff and cool. They're two big, stiff European bastards. What's not to love? And Cesaro's at it with, like, Big E. Johnny tries to eliminate Andrade... But, like, as he goes to throw Andrade over, Selena gets onto the apron to stop her, to stop him. And, and Gargano's like, what the fuck? Get off the apron. I'm trying to eliminate him. And then, bang, Andrade drops Gargano before getting dropped by Cole. <laughs> and then, number 20 makes his entrance. <laughs> We have more beef as MVP leads the almighty Bobby Lashley down to the ring and he has a spear waiting for everybody. He turns AJ Styles inside out with a spear before he goes toe to with Sheamus. And then we can do Walter and Big E also going at it because that would also be nice. And I guess Cesaro, and, not Cesaro, <laughs> Cole and Orton or, or something like that, whatever, whoever's left. Cesaro tries to toss Andrade over. But again, Selena steps onto the apron to stop Andrade from being tossed out, and he drops Cesaro. And still no eliminations as number 21 enters. The biggest little man in WWE history 
and 2k22 cover boy Rey Mysterio enters at number 21. And he's at an immediate disadvantage because he slides into the ring and he's face to face with the Almighty. He slides underneath Lashley, hits a drop kick, and then drops Pepper Hurricane Rana, so we've got his speed advantage. Then he then has to go face to face with Volla. And everyone's like, what the fuck, Ray, no run. Ray gets chopped. Ow. And then <laughs> on the other side of the ring, we've got Gargano and Andrade going back at it. And um, Gargano goes to eliminate Andrade, but Zelina again steps on the apron to block it. But then we hear like a cheer from the from the crowd because Candice LeRae runs out. And she yanks Zelina off the apron and chases her off to the back. And Andrade's like, wait, Zelina, what the fuck's going on? What? And then Gargano can hit the Hurricane Rana on Andrade, and with no Zelina Vega there to stop it, finally eliminate El Idolo from the match. Johnny takes in the adoration from the crowd, and Andrade's like, ah, oh, you bitch, you bitch, you bitch. And then <laughs> Johnny gets into the ring. I don't know how I imagine it, actually, is um, Andrade's looking at the apron, Gargano Hurricane Rana's in, but he goes over the top but lands on the apron. So Andrade's out, Gargano's on the apron, but he has gone over the top. So when he turns around, bang, he just gets smacked by Lashley. And then Gargano is out as well. And that's it for eliminations as number 22 enters. <laughs> Pete Dunne is here, and he's starting a fight with Cesaro. Don takes Cesaro down, and then he gets dropped by Adam Cole's super kick, hits the Panama Sunrise, and then he sort of looks around, and nobody else is on their feet. It's only Adam Cole on his feet. So he gives the perfect time to do an Adam Cole Bay Bay, and he squats down, and he's like, oh, Adam Cole Bay Bay. But as he does it, Walter rises up from behind him, and Cole sort of realises, <laughs> you get that visual of Walter just angrily, his arms behind his back, staring behind Cole. And Cole's expression changes. He goes from smiling to suddenly to, oh fuck. He turns around. Bang! We get that big chop. Like, he, the one he gave to Cole on NXT that one time. <laughs> he sells it like death. Big E and Volta then end up slapping some meat. Before Big E manages to hoist Volta onto his shoulders. And eliminate him from the Royal Rumble. Big E celebrates this massive huge elimination. And then turns into an RKO by Randy. Then Randy gets into a bit of like Pete Dunne in the corner as number 23 makes his entrance. From NXT, it's Hit Row's top dollar. He enters the ring and immediately Rey Mysterio comes flying at him with a, like a crossbody. And he catches Rey Mysterio, like, in position for a World Strongest Slam. And then does that thing where he'll also catch Cole on his shoulders. So he's got one guy on his shoulders, one guy in his hands. Slams them both down. And then he joins the fight, just fighting Sheamus and Lashley. No one else gets eliminated before number 24 comes out. Bro. Matt Riddle is number 24, and he immediately works his magic. He runs in, he hits a big knee on Sheamus, and then eliminates Sheamus in the match. Sheamus is sent to the showers, and Riddle gets into a fight with Lashley and Cesaro. Lashley rocks Riddle with a clothesline. And then Lashley's on his feet, he turns around and catches a flying Rey Mysterio who's jumping at him. And Lashley picks him up, well doesn't pick him up, he catches him. And then when he's in his arms, just tosses him out, so Rey Mysterio is gone. Riddle then drops Lashley with a knee, and Bobby sort of rolls into the corner, and Riddle stands tall as any man on his feet, and out comes number 25. <laughs> the crowd erupts. Because WWE Hall of Famer and former WWE Champion Rob Van Dam is here in the Rumble. Riddle looks excited as RVD enters. And he's like, oh, hey, dude. Hey, bro. And RVD's like, yo, dude. Hey, bro. And they pop for this exchange because it's funny because they both smoke weed. <laughs> the two take part in... I actually have it written on my fucking 
script right here. The two take part in what I will call weed comedy for a bit. And of course, the first person to object to this is AJ Styles. And he gets fucked by a big knee by Riddle. And he then points to RVD. He's like, bro, you should go up top, dude. And RVD obliges. He hits the five-star frog splash on AJ to a massive pop. But as soon as RVD gets to his feet, bang, Lashley spears him in half. <laughs> Riddle then charges at Lashley. He also gets speared. And Lashley tosses Riddle out to a big boo. Lashley then picks up RVD, tosses him out as well to an even bigger boo. He then takes the fight to Pete. He has Pete Dunn locked in the hurt lock as number 26 makes his entrance. <laughs> Unfamiliar music hits, and out comes Olympic gold medalist Gable Stevenson. He's entering the Royal Rumble. Because remember, we did announce that he would be in this. I did that on purpose, I announced it once, and then never mentioned it again. Like, hoping people would forget. <laughs> but, Gable gets in the ring, and he's face to face with Bobby Lashley. Lashley swings at him, but he ducks, and he takes Lashley down with like a wrestling takedown, to a big pop. And Lashley looks shocked, he's like, what the fuck? And MVP's like, no, get up and kick his ass, Bobby. So Lashley charges at him, but Gable scoops him up, and like tosses him over like a belly to belly over the top rope and out of the ring. The Almighty has been eliminated by the rookie in his debut match. Stevenson's going, see celebrating like mad, like he's just won another gold medal. And Lashley's just fucking livid on the outside. He's like, what the fuck has just happened? He goes to enter again. He goes to enter back into the ring to take it. But MVP is like, no, 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 no. It's not worth your time, Bobby. Come on, it's not worth your time. And Lashley slowly starts to leave. He's as he, he, like, he walks like six paces and then just glares back into the ring at Stevenson. Takes another six paces, glares back into the ring, glares back into the ring. <laughs> and then number 27 makes his entrance. Montez Ford is at number tw 27. He rushes out at like full speed. <laughs> as, as like absolute blistering pace but he gets wiped out by Bobby Lashley who's making his way back up the ramp still and just bang big clothesline to the sprinting Montez Ford turns him inside out he then lays Lashley out of a dominator on no he doesn't lay Lashley out Lashley lays Ford out with a dominator and tosses him into the steps and Stevenson looks at this like what the fuck Bobby come on and their referees and the road agents are like, come on, Bobby, let's get back, let's go home. <laughs> and MVP, he's, he's got his cane. I don't know why he's got his cane, because he never got injured in my world, but it's a cool visual, so I want to keep I want him to keep the cane. He points at Gable with the cane. He's, he gestures to Ford after he points at him. He's like, that should have been you, my guy. <laughs> and then they both leave, finally. And then, in the ring, Randy drops top dollar with an RKO who staggers to his feet before Randy wipes him out of a clothesline, so top dollar is out. We then get a face-off between Randy Orton and Gable Stevenson, the current youngest world champion in WWE history versus the man who is tipped to become the next one at just 21 years old. Gable takes Randy off his feet with a big belly-to-belly -belly slam. He then turns his attention to Big E, and but as he turns his attention away Randy just long enough, Randy turns him around and drops him with an RKO, and then... He, as Randy gets up to his feet after hitting Gable with the RKO, he turns around and sees AJ Styles flying at him over springboard. He gets plucked out of the air with an RKO as well. And Randy Orton is just on a fucking roll as number 28 comes out. <laughs> Former two time Intercontinental Champion Damian Priest is number 28. He's, he goes out, he gets in the ring with Randy. These two were once, you know, albeit rather temporarily stable mates back in the church days before Randy, you know, was a worm. Priest drops Randy with a big kick and he lays Randy up with a reckoning. And then gets into it with Pete Dunne. Got Cesaro and Gable sort of going at it now because that's a nice, easy opponent to put Gable up against in his debut to make him look alright. And then the buzzer, sound, the buzzer sounds for the penultimate entrant in the Men's Royal Rumble match. Can we please have quiet on the set? Awesome! I came to the play, play, play. play. The 
a price to pay. Time for you to get down on your knees. It's the Miz. His the entire A list is coming out with him. And they're like gassing him up. He slowly takes off his jacket, picking out which man in the ring he wants to attack. He's about to enter the ring. And then he sees Montez Ford still down on the outside after Bobby Lashley wiped him out. He sort of like points at him and laughs. And he's like, Shanky, toss him into the ring. Shanky tosses Ford into the ring. So Ford is now officially in the match. And then Miz gets onto the apron. He steps into the ring. He takes the sunglasses off. He turns around. He's like, Shanky, hold my glasses. And then he turns around. Drop kick by Montez Ford. Miz has been eliminated. In a spot similar to, you know, Heath Slater and Sheamus from 2018. And, of course, this gasses Tez up. He starts doing the Ultimate Warrior rope shake. And then he turns around. Bang. Pete Dunne, bitter end, takes Ford out. But he's now officially in the match. Pete Dunne then also turns around. Catches a flying Adam Cole. But a bang, rogue forearm. Before he disposes of the Undisputed Era leader. So Adam Cole has been eliminated by Pete Dunne. He turns around. AJ swinging at him. He goes to punch him. And Pete Dunne catches AJ's hand. And Pete Dunne rips off AJ's glove on his hand. And snaps the bare fingers of AJ Styles. And AJ's like, ow! Which then leads to Pete Dunne hitting the bitter end on AJ. As the buzzer sounds for one final time. And the final entrance for the men's rumble enters. Well, he seemed pretty happy earlier on, and now we know why the prize fighter has pulled the ideal prize winning number. And he immediately runs to the ring and helps out AJ. He drops Pete Dunn with a stunner, and he sort of picks up the glove that Pete Dunn took off. He's like, hey, you owe me one, buddy. And he's like, cheers, boss. And then he turns around, bang, Cesaro scoops him up in position for a swing. And <laughs> Kev's like, no, 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 no. And Cesaro begins swinging him before AJ cuts Cesaro off with a big Pele kick. Owens regains his footing and he's like, ah, oh, I'm going to stun Cesaro. And then Cesaro gets stunned and he rolls under the bottom rope to the outside. Big E and Gable then sort of team up to take down the Bivens men before Gable then drops Big E with like another wrestling takedown. Gable unstraps and he gets ready to eliminate Big E when the crowd sort of like, ah, oh, makes a noise like someone's running out from the back because Lashley's back in the match. He slides back into the ring and he drops Gable with a spear. And then he disposes of Stevenson to eliminate him from the match. Then Lashley leaves on his own tuition this time. He's like, welcome to WWE, kid. And then as he walks to the back. But we now have our final eight. And everyone on the floor is down. <laughs> and Montez Ford is the first man to his feet. He gets all fired up. And he goes up top to hit a massive frog splash. And for some reason he picked Randy Orton. I don't know why. Because this obviously isn't going to end well. Randy springs to life, catches Montez Ford in, out of midair with an RKO, and then eliminates Montez Ford. And Randy celebrates the elimination before he gets grabbed from behind, and Damian Priest tosses Randy Orton out of the match. <laughs> Randy sort of looks in the ring pissed off, but ultimately, you know, he's like, whatever. <laughs> Priest and Don are the only two men left standing in the ring. It's like we get sort of like a mini match between those two for a few minutes because they're the only two standing in the ring. Priest gets done in position for the reckoning before bang! Kevin Owens twats him from behind with a steel chair. <laughs> Owens is like, AJ, AJ, and he tosses AJ a chair as well. And AJ begins swinging a steel chair on Pete Don. Owens then picks Damian Priest up, hits him with a stunner, and Kevin's like, AJ, come on, come on. And. AJ obliges to help Owens out, and both the Bivens men eliminate Damian Priest. <laughs> Kevin and AJ then give each other a high five, They're like, yeah. And then Dunn has got to his knees at this point, and he starts swinging at AJ. Big E also springs to life, and he starts taking the fight to both AJ and Kevin. But AJ is clearly more exhausted than Owens is, because he's been in since number 8, and Kevin was number 30. But Owens is still making him do most of the heavy lifting. And AJ's like, here you go, you can have a chair. And then they both start wailing on both men. Owens is like, go for a phenomenal forearm on Pete. And AJ hits it, and then they, have, they continue to gang up, eliminating Pete Dunne from the match. <laughs> Owens and AJ now hug, because like they're just in control right now. This is their rumble. 
It's just them and Big E left in the ring. And Big E looks across at both of them. They both got steel chairs. Big E pulls his straps down. He's like, come on, bring it the fuck on, boys. And Styles charges at Big E. And Big E drops him with that big Uranagi. But then immediately he's cut off by a chair shot by Kevin Owens. Big E falls to his knees. Owens tosses the other chair to AJ. And they position Big E for a concerto, like... For how like Biggie's on his knees and one guy's behind him, one guy's in front of him, and they're gonna do that that concerto. But then we see Cesaro slowly crawl back into the ring. Owens notices him. He's like, Hey look, AJ, Cesaro's over there, go get him. And AJ's like, Well we we, we need to take Biggie v oh. he gets pissed off. So he instead chos- he tosses the chair down in a hump. And he charges at Cesaro, who's up against the ropes. But as he charges, Cesaro ducks down hoists AJ into the air, bang, AJ Styles has been eliminated. Owens then swings the chair at Cesaro, he ducks, and then bang, big clothesline, over goes Kevin Owens, and Cesaro collapses to the floor. The crowd goes absolutely crazy, we're down to our final two men, Cesaro and Big E. They're both laid out on the mat, entering at number 6 and number 15 respectively. (laughs) So... As it is so far, this whole thing, the entire Final Four, I've basically modified from the 2007 Royal Rumble. I've seen that match so many times, and like it's it's engraved in my skull. And the finish I did here is basically exactly the same as that one up to this point, because it had the two heels attacking people with a chair, even down to somebody sliding back into the ring. So if it sounds familiar, that's why. But <laughs> both men slowly pull themselves up. They use the ropes to sort of like hoist themselves up on opposite ends of the ring. They lock eyes with each other and they both crack a smile because they these two respect the hell out of each other. They both want what could be their biggest opportunity to break out. Big E has been waiting years for this moment. Cesaro looked like he may never get the opportunity. One of them is going to WrestleMania. We then get like a 10 minute match between them. Like we extend the final moments of this rumble. Um, multiple elimination attempts, nobody gets out. But in the end, there can only be one. Big E drops Cesaro with a big ending. Followed by a big clothesline, Cesaro is eliminated. And Big E wins the 2022 Royal Rumble. Eh, 83 is fine because I bought the special set and shit. Again, paid for an A-list celebrity because The Rock was on the show and <laughs> they don't get more A-list than The Rock. But yeah, 83 is fine for a main event. It should still get a good show rating. I believe AJ Styles was the Iron Man. I didn't actually do the maths, but it seems like it would be him. <laughs> oh, got the most eliminations. Owens, Styles, and Cesaro, the final four. Big E wins. And again, <laughs> if you want a good representation about how the the final four in this Rumble goes, just do go back and watch the end of the 2007 Royal Rumble, because that's very much what I based it off. But we're doing it big. Big E, obviously the New Day boys run out from the back to give Big E a hug. And they're, they bollock when he won the belt, and they all just hug in the ring, like, yeah, yeah, you, you done it. I'm the IC champion, Kofi had his WWE title run, and now you're going to WrestleMania. And they do the thing where they hoist Biggie on their shoulders as he points to the sign. And we'd have Cesaro on the outside. He'd be obviously disappointed and kicking himself and beating himself up. But he'd be stood there in the ring, hands on his hips, just looking down, shaking his head. And Biggie would be like, whoa, 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 and offer his hand out. And obviously Cesaro would shake Biggie's hand out of respect. Raise Big E's arm as well as he, before he walks to the back. And it's Big E soaking the victory. Because he's going to the grandest stage of them all. See? 95 rated show. <laughs> the 83 rated Rumble didn't really bother. If I would have put Roman and Seth on last, it would have got a 100. But I don't like it when the Rumble doesn't go on last, okay? Good. Glad we're all in agreement. <laughs> But we're here. The road to WrestleMania is upon us. And things are only just getting started. 
what matters more than the 95 is what you thought of the show. So do let me know what you thought in the comments below. And I'll see you next time for episode 211. With Raw. And the beginning of the road to WrestleMania.